everyone, and welcome to the Battle Union's post-draft power rankings. I am Chaos in the Sky, and I have with me today the one and the only Shroom Raver. How's it going, Shroom? It's going very well indeed. I am a bit ill, but we're going to power on through it. Um, yeah, hi everyone, Shroom Raver here. Excited to be back for Season 4 of the Battle Union. Um, it's a very exciting time. We've got some new teams, uh, more teams than before, 16 teams this season some returning friends and some new faces as well we're gonna like um, we're gonna call like eight of them by the end of the season because this is too many people yeah yeah there is far too many it's we also have strange. what really matters and that is new pokemon yes it's a whole new generation of course as you know sun and moon um so there's lots of new toys to play with uh so i'm sure the drafts like will be on screen we're not going to run through each pick individually um but yeah, there's going to be some sort of notable absences, I'm sure, of ones you might expect to be drafted. But what we're going to do is just go through our rankings from 16 through to 1. Um, and this is literally, like, we say this every time, uh, but it is important, of course, to make the disclaimer. These are literally just our opinions, um, how we look at the drafts. Um, you may have different opinions. That's absolutely fine. In fact, we encourage it. Uh, we encourage you to let us know what you think of our of our rankings. Um did However just, bad or otherwise they might be. Did you just encourage people on the internet to have opinions? I did, and I'm expecting um, men in dark uh, suits and glasses and earpieces to come and take me away very soon. Will Smith is going to be on, Will Smith is going to be on your doorstep with the little clicker thing. I fully expect that to happen. Um, and if it does, you know, chaos, you're going to have to take this one on your own, buddy, because I'm not going to remember Absolutely what my name is. Absolutely not. <laughs> Never. <laughs> All right. Anyways. Uh, yeah, we're going to go from 16 to 1. We spent like maybe an hour on setting this up, so yeah. it's it's kind of a little loose interpretation, but it'll get a lot better as the season goes on once we start to weed out the people who suck at the game. Yes. All right, we Shroom. are looking at you, Slyro. <laughs> Shroom, if you'd like to <laughs> kick it off with 16th place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we should say to the, to the people involved, by the way, as again, these are just our opinions. It was difficult choices to make. Um, and as most of you will know, these tend to sort of fluctuate wildly as the season goes on. So those lower ranking right now, not necessarily expected to stay there. I would like to but, say, um, though, that it was not difficult to rank 16th place. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, no, I know. I just, I'm throwing him under the bus immediately. Well, we'll have to see what, what he says. He, he is a staple of the Battle Union, and that, unfortunately, down at 16 is going to be uh, Skyrander and the Scandinavian Stoutlands. Um, <clears throat> there are aspects of his draft, and it's it's weird to put a draft like this so low down, because there are aspects that are terrifying. He's got the sand core of Titar and Excadrill, along with Stoutland, and he's got some terrifying power in there as well. You've got the likes of Buzzwall, who is one of the new Ultra Beasts, of course. Um, interesting picks with Magnazone, who is a nice answer to a lot of the major threats these days. Um, and like a lone executor, that's cool as well, but the thing that I just think we didn't like about it as much is just, I don't know how much we trust it to be a Skyrander draft. You know, yeah. he's he's been in this league for for a long time, and we're so used to seeing this fast hyper offense from Sky, and the team is slow. He only it's has worryingly slow. He only has one Pokemon above base one hundred, and that's Frostlass. And I think everything else is beneath base ninety, maybe. Yeah, and like I mean, Moltres is hitting base ninety, and of course he's got Excadrill and Stoutland in the sand. Uh, but once that sand goes down, you're just looking at a couple of base 80s or thereabouts. I think extra might be 88 and Stoutland around there too. So it's a little bit of a worry. Um, he's got some really intriguing picks. You don't see Moltres go very often. Roselia is fascinating. Um, I, I'm actually excited to see what he's going to do with the likes of Roselia. Uh, the voted pick alone in Executor, pretty cool. Uh, we'll have to see how he does with the Long Neck Beast. Um... As we say, you know, we're not necessarily expecting these positions to stay throughout the entire season. Um, but, you know, just going on what we know Sky can do, uh, it just it, it's a slow draft. It doesn't look majorly like the kind of stuff we expect to see from him. I worry if he's going to be able to settle into it. But we had these worries last season. We looked at his draft and went, is he going to be able to settle into this? And he did. So, you know, it, time will tell with it, but... We have our worries about this one. Um, just hope for Sky's sake he is going to be able to get over them. Yeah, I mean, I just... I didn't expect this to be Sky's draft, like you said. It, no. doesn't, it doesn't look like him at all. And I, I don't know, I just look at it, and other than, like, the sand, I don't really see, like, team synergy, I guess. I don't know how to say it. 
it just doesn't look right. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but yeah, as as we say, you know, th- these 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 picks at this point in the season are not based on ability. But if we're looking at that, we know that Sky has the ability to make a variety of drafts work. It doesn't look like a Sky around a draft, and I'm desperately worried that he's not going to be able to make it work. But time will tell on that. He, one. Uh, he also he's only got threats. he also like Mega Blastoise and Excadrill are his hazard removal, and they don't like to always be hazard removal. I mean, it's true. Extra certainly not. Mega Blastoise, I think, will enjoy it more. Yeah, but do you want to bring um, Rapid Spin Mega Blast like seven out of eight weeks? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. But um, yeah, you know, I'm 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 more okay with his hazard removal than with some teams. But we'll oh, get on to them. Oh, definitely. There is definitely sort of worse. We'll get on to them later. But uh, yeah, Sky does stay at sixteen for now. But I'm sure that he'll be able to move upwards. You know if he can sky with this draft, which he has done in the past. All right, well, that's the end of this uh, video and this entire series. In fact, the TBU itself <laughs> is shutting down from here on. So we're glad you all came out, and we are I guess we're going to move on to 15 now before I like decide to commit seppuku. Yes. Now, number 15, um, we have Cloud. Cloud and the Jersey Weaviles. Um, again... It, on paper, and we're going to say this a lot because th- there aren't really many drafts or any that you'd look at and go, that is just bad. Like, obviously, with the new toys of Pokemon coming in, there's going to be more good stuff to choose from. So the likelihood of seeing a really bad draft is is lessened. And this is, again, no exception. There is some intriguing stuff here. Um, he's got some very, very good staples. Um, his hazard removal, unlike unlike Sky for, for Chaos, certainly... I think it's really good here, you know, Zapdos and Weezing, plus the, um... Tentacruel. The put-off, the... Sorry, yes, yeah, so did I say Weezing? Weezing doesn't get rapid spin, Tentacruel does. <laughs> yeah, I was about um, to say, like, wait a minute, since when can Weezing do that? Is that a new Gen 7 move or something? It'd be cool if Weezing got Defog, but it, it doesn't, nice. which is a shame. And yeah, he's got the, um, the put-off of, of Mega Sableye as well. I think what we thought about, sort of, this draft, this, this draft, there's... There's nothing there that really stands out as, okay... There's the game changer, there's the hard hitter, there's the war breaker. Like, you've got a lot of good speedy revengey stuff, um, you know, and the fact that he's got Tentacruel and Mega Sableye means that Zapdos can put in that role as well, which it really wants to do. Uh, and you've got, like, Greninja doing that as well, some cool stuff in the form of, like, Comfy and Amber Pom. It but... is, we should say it is Torrent Greninja, so it's not, like, go around yes. just Protean destroying everything Greninja. That is true, that is true. Um... But, like, the only real sort of actual wall-breaking prowess you've got going on there kind of is Agron, and it's an Agron. Yeah, as much as I love Agron, it's, like, not good at doing things, usually. It's, yeah, it's it's too slow to be able to make up for its massive amounts of weaknesses, including two very common four times. Um, Historically, it hasn't necessarily done major fantastic work in League. Maybe he can make it work here. Um... Some really cool low tier, low tier, say low tier, um, lower ranked picks like the Comfy, not one you see every day. Uh, the voted pick of Murkrow, big fan of that over are, here. Are you Lovely sure? Are you sure that the Gen Seven mod that was released like a month ago isn't often seen? Comfy? No, no, no. Comfy isn't seen very often. Not a massive amount. <laughs> yeah. But um, are you mocking me? <laughs> Yeah, did you, it like went over your head. You're saying like you don't it's, see this very often. I'm like, yeah, Shroom, it's Gen 7. It just came out, man. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off my game. I am I am I'm ill. Oh, that's my excuse. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we we sort of worried that this this draft didn't have the massive star power and the the big wall breaking threat that a lot of drafts love to have is I think was our main concern. And it's a pretty big concern. Yeah, really. he's got like Good mons and like they can all do damage, but does mm. like what is Zapdos's base special attack? It's over a hundred. It is over a hundred. I think that like yeah. I don't think he has like anything one like one twenty or higher unless Zapdos and Greninja are. I don't uh, know. No, Greninja isn't. Um, yeah, I know Greninja is like it's like one eight or something like that. One oh eight. And the ones that do have high attack, like Steelix has very high attack, but it's not generally it's, seen it, in that it's role. It's Steelix, yeah, but he mm. doesn't have really heavy hitting mons like, yeah if a wall, that is true if a wall comes in it's going to be or if the opponent has like you know switch in options it's going to be hard for him to break through the defensive mm. cores of other teams i think 
Yeah, so I think we could see a, a reliance on Mega Sableye, which is no bad thing. Mega Sableye tanks hits, we all know it. And I think we could, unfortunately, see Zapdos in that sort of bulky pivot role, um, as opposed to a full hard-hitting offensive monster uh, trying to wear things down. I think that's going to be the case of it. It's going to be a case of wearing things down gradually and then revenging, as opposed to going for that sort of big, massive, hard-hitting war break, which it just seems that he doesn't have too many options for. Yep, I think that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's a cool draft. There are some cool. There are some cool stuff in it. Like, I love seeing Murkrow. I'm just going to keep throwing it out there. It's my favorite Pokemon. So even though it's the voted pick, I still have a soft spot for Cloud in this one. Um, I hope it does work. <laughs> but uh, yes, we shall move on. Um, hey, before really quick, we're, I'm looking at the draft thing. We're looking at the next team, which is Eric and the Bristol Beedus in 14th. I think this is 14th. Yes. He's got, yes. like, what are these Pokemon off to the right? Did he make switches? I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to rapidly see if Tor I can find any information. Tornadus, on this. Is Tornadus D even a thing? Like, I was thinking, like, oh, that's just, like, random words because it's Tornadus D, but Heliolisk and Regirock look like actual switches. Yeah. I'm I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Um, uh, neither am I. Can we, like, what's, where's Eric's team tab? <laughs> We've got a few technical difficulties here. Um, yeah, basically, Eric has yeah. Like, changed his team since we set up the list yesterday. What is the name of Eric's team? I can't find it. Eric's team is AS Rowlet. Oh, that's right. I'm looking for Bristol Bidoof. Uh, it's still the same Pokemon on his team tab. Okay, well, that's what we're going to go with. Yeah, so Eric may Eric's team may have switched Electivire for Heliolisk and Snorlax for Regirock. We're not entirely sure, so there's no telling what it'll be come week one. But we're going to work mm. under the assumption that it's still Electivire and Snorlax. Because actually, Heliolisk makes me like his draft even more. It would, actually. Heliolisk would be a nice addition. Um, essentially, Eric, there Sorry. are some really, really, there are some really good points to this draft. And some not so much bad as just difficult to understand points. Um, and the main one that stands out there is those round seven and eight picks of Polytoad and Kingdra. He seem, it's like he's just kind of added rain, and there doesn't seem to be much of a reason for it. Like, yes, you've got a potential Tornadus T or D, apparently, um, next to it, which we're not entirely sure about. Not sure what um, that is. With those, with those Hurricanes, uh, the Mega Scizor with the lack, slightly less weak uh, fire hits. But other than that, really, it's difficult to see why you would draft rain. I don't know how much it adds to his draft. Like, we've seen semi-rain drafts which are the kind of drafts where yes rain is there and it has benefits for a lot of things but it's a draft that can work outside of rain perfectly well this just appears to be a draft that has kind of gone oh there's a bit of rain there as well now i know that eric was sniped quite badly during the draft but it just seems like an arbitrary last minute decision oh i'll add these two just in case it was like he had Mega Scizor, and he's like, how do I stop myself from dying to fire? Because he didn't have any fire resistances yet. So he's like, you know what? I'll just make it rain. And then he picked yeah. up Polytoad and Kingdra. Mm. Absolutely. Um, so it's a bit of a strange one there. I'm not sure if it's even going to help. Um, but let's look at some of the positives of this draft. That has bench. has a Decidueye. Decidueye is also cool. The two main things are Decidueye and the bench. The bench, incidentally... Potentially is Tornadus, Therian, Pangora, and Snorlax, which is spooky. That's a spooky bench. But Decidueye, we really like Decidueye. Um, so many options. It's got a really nice trapping, stat passing niche, which with the wall breakers that Eric does have, and I'm looking at the likes of Nidoking and Pangoro and maybe even Mega Scizor, um, that's scary. That's it, a really scary thing. It is terrifying. Like, what. You finally managed to stop Needle King from killing half of your team, and then Pangoro comes out, and you're just like, well, what yeah. now? And with Decidueye, with the ability to baton pass Nasty Plot and Sword Stance, and the ability to trap in Mons and set up on them, it's, it looks like it could be a game-changer in League. We haven't seen much of it yet, but I think this could be a time when we see it really come into its own. Um, what is? Do you know what Decidueye's base speed is? <laughs> It like, it's not wonderful. It's I think like, it's in the 70s or 80s. Is it? Yeah, so I was about to say, Eric's team is a little lacking in speed, outside of, mm. like, Tornadus T and Swift Swim Kingdra. I'm pretty sure everything else is beneath 100, if I'm not mistaken. It is base 70. 
Yeah, and I think Togekiss and Needle King are both under 100, aren't they? I'm pretty sure. Yes, they and are. I know Scizor and Uxie and Electivire mm. is, because my main well, complaint about Electivire is its speed. So, which is why... Uxie, weirdly, is one of his fastest. I think that hits base 90. Does it really? Base I thought 85. it was, like, base 60. But, uh, no, it's weirdly quick. Well, I just always Uxie pay attention... Weirdly quick. I always pay attention to the one that matters, which is Mesprit, so that's probably why. But, uh... Uxie's base 95. It's quicker than Mesprit. That is ridiculous. But it's is actually still one better. of his fastest ones. Um, uh, that might be better now that he may have Heliolisk. I'm not sure what this. He might have yeah. Heliolisk in place of Electivire, which honestly for me would infinitely improve this draft. Might have even moved him up a space or two. But mm -hmm. uh, assuming he doesn't have the Heliolisk, he's got to rely on Tornadus T, which is a good Pokemon by all means. But it's not mm. like you don't want to have that be your only speed outside of Swift Swim. Yeah, that's very true. But that could that could but, be really mitigated with Heliolisk, but we'll have to wait and see yeah. if that actually is a thing or not. Yeah, we're as confused as you are on this one, uh, ladies and gents. We don't know what's going on with Eric Strath at this point, but you know we'll what? Have to see I if will. Can uh, make work. I edit. I'm editing the videos, so I will ask after we record, and what his team actually is will be on the screen. So you'll yes. know. We won't know right now. We'll know later, but you guys will know immediately if he has the Heliolisk mm. in the Red Rock or not. Yeah, it's gonna miss. It's a mystery for us, but uh, you guys will know. All right, let's move on so, to twelve. No, thirteenth. Thirteen. Thirteen is gonna be uh, Dokes, our friend Dokes, and what I think is the Dendermill Dedene. Um, I'm never gonna try and pronounce that like ever. This team, this team, a again, it has some really nice points. He starts off with Tapu Koko, um, fast electric type always useful and he's got these really he's got alolan mark really nice um answer to a lot of the prevalent threats um regenerator core amoongus and momola plus mandibuzz that's gross he's got wall breaking he's got power but our massive massive problem with this team is the speed tapu koko is easily his quickest it's like base 120 or something like that his next fastest is mama swine at base 80 and that's a worry yeah, but he it has really he has Amoongus at least, which has a higher attack stat than Talonflame, so it should be okay. Very true, very true indeed. Um, <laughs> but and you can see where we're coming in on the bench with Shuckle to try and mitigate that. But historically, it has to be said, Sticky Web has not worked well in League. It just is one of those things that seems to have fallen by the wayside, and it just it hasn't been a major player in the league format for a long time now. I can probably um, count the amount of time... I don't watch a ton of league matches, but I can probably count mm. the amount of times I've seen someone use sticky webs and it work in league on one hand if I cut off, like, three mm. of my fingers. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a difficult one to make happen. And, like, he's got some Tailwind support going on there. Again, Ditto can be quite tricksy when it comes to speed, um, and he's got that in, which is cool. Um, I wonder how much effect Chuckle is going to have for him. Um... It might be that we see a few transfers coming in for Dokes where he tries to gain a bit more speed because it does seem to be a big worry. Like, if he if he can get those webs up and running, more power to him, that's going to be well played. And you, it has to be said, the likes of Rhyperia and Camerupt and Mamoswine with Sticky Web, like, that's scary. Yeah, it definitely can't deny dangerous. It. That's a very scary thought. But if he can't get those webs up, he might be in trouble. Um, yeah, and you so... mentioned... Tailwind with Mandibuzz, which Mandibuzz can mm. tailwind and even has U-turn to U-turn out. But yeah. It gives you, like, two turns to do the damage you need to do by the time yeah. you get out of Mandibuzz into something else. It's, like, it's not easy. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Um, if he can play around that and make it work for him, then this could be a very scary team. He certainly has the ability to wear things down. Those defensive cores he has are difficult to break. And certainly if he can get that going, maybe get the webs up, work with Mamoswine, work with Tapu then he could be in a good position. Um, but it might be difficult for him to work. He's got a few speed-boosting users as well, which is always nice too. Um, so Wait, he has a... it'll all be... What speed-boost? Like like the likes of... He's got some agility users, some rock polish oh, users going on there. Oh, I speed-boost is in the ability, and I'm like, this isn't the guy with Shark Oh, no, 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 no. He's got some Pokemon that can boost their speed. Um... So I think a lot of this draft is going to hinge on his ability to work with um, manipulating speed. If he can get it going, this draft is going to be tough to break down and scary to face. If not, I think he's going to be in trouble. I agree wholeheartedly. I think the main problem with him, and like we mentioned with Eric, the big issue is the speed. Yeah, very much so. Speed very tiers are so. very important in league format, something that I have learned very heavily over mm. over the, like, I don't know, I've probably been doing league stuff for like a year. 
Speed yeah, teams are way and... more important than a lot of people give it credit for. Oh yeah, and there are teams that have got it right, it has to be said. I worry that Dokes has too much of a gap towards the top um, that he's going to have to try and work around. Yep. I right, so... Move on to 12 now? Yes. Excuse me. <clears throat> are you so, alright? Do you need a breather? Yeah. Yeah, do you want to sort of talk about um, our next one for a little bit while I clear myself a little I bit? I <laughs> don't know the team name, but... Uh, Maryland Antel Terrapins. There you go. He's still the same as the last time I saw him. We have Kelly, aka Under the Radar... At mm. uh, 12th, the Maryland Tor Terrapins, as you said. Uh, he's got, like, the worst of the Tapus, but it's still a Tapu, so it's good. He's got Tapu Finney, uh, which I believe you told me got Defog. I'm not all on the up and up yeah. about the uh, Gen 7 Mons yet. But Tapu Finney gets Defog. He's got that and Salamence, and I think that's, like, it, other than Gligar. Which Gligar, Gligar. isn't horrible for removal, but it's pretty good. Uh, he has Gengar, which got nerfed this gen, so I don't know why it's there, but, uh, Kelly doesn't really like ground-type moves. He's got Rotom, Mo, and Salamence, and then just, mm. like, nothing else wants to ever get hit by a ground-type move. And I guess Azelf. <coughs> Azelf has, uh, Levitate, doesn't it? But, uh, yes. Heatran and then Gengar, like, neither of them want to get hit by ground-type moves. And then his only answers to it really are Salamence and Rotom, Mo, which can work, but, uh... Mm. I think one of my biggest worries about Kelly's team is the longevity of his walls. Um, you know, the likes of Tapu Fini, very bulky, but it gets no recovery. Uh, oh, it economy doesn't? Rest thought... because of its own ability. I thought that it got recovery. That's horrible. No, no. The only recovery it gets is Aqua Ring Does... and Leftovers. Gligar gets Roost, doesn't it? So he's got mm. that at least. Gligar, Gligar is the only one, but um, yeah, Rotom Mo Rotom can Mo go doesn't... defensive but doesn't get recovery. Um, Salamence gets Roost, also, but, does... but you know... You Salamence don't... get Roost, but... You don't, you don't normally... always want to use it in that role. And yeah. like Heatran can go defensive, doesn't have recovery as well. Um, so Salamence can pass wishes, but I, I worry about his walls being worn down. Uh, he's got very scary offense to make up for that, and quick offense too. Azelf, Gengar, Salamence, Mienxiao. Um And he, of course, has got the Togedemaru. Yeah, that's the real threat here. The new Pikachu that's like it's like don't knock steel it you tried it. it's like steel pikachu but anyway it is he also don't has, knock it you tried it. he has gothitelle which i think i've seen yes. used correctly like once in my life so it now, can this be is good but i feel like it's one of those mons that it depends on the skill of your opponent more so than your own skill mm. well it's it's interesting because um gothitelle standing alone on just isn't it's it's not much of a fantastic mon until you consider um the shadow tag which Gothitel here for Kelly does have. So that's going to be interesting to see how people play around it. Gothitel can potentially be a game changer. On the other hand, it can do nothing. Um, so it's going to be contingent, yes, on Kelly and also his opponent's prep for it. It um, definitely takes skill on the user's part. I think Kelly can manage that if he does it right. But it also, I think like, so. But like, I think it depends a little more so on your opponent's ability to counter it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, there's going things we watch with interest for Kelly is can he use Gothitelle correctly? Can he use it effectively? And how is he going to stop his walls from being worn down quickly without the recovery that he re that a wall really wants is, is going to be? How useful is Kelly's Gengar issue. without Levitate? Is also something I want to see. That's also going to be true. Um, Gengar used to have that as a major sort of draw, and even then it didn't get drafted much. So Kelly has got these slightly outside of the box um, picks, which he works well with. Uh, it has to be said, but we'll have to see how they all come together this time. Yep. So, um, yeah, moving on from that, we can go on to number 11, I want to say? I think this is 11. Yes, it should number be. 11, uh, and that's going to be Bub. Bub and Munchlaxter United. Um, what do we have to say about this team? Uh, He's got Lycanroc for a reason I can't understand. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Like, I love Lycanroc midday form. I think it looks cool. I think it is cool. It's um, definitely the better of the Lycanrocs. Yeah, but he doesn't have a sand setter, um, an auto sand setter. Um, so, I don't know. It, it's quick in its own right, I suppose, just as a quick attack, a potential suicide lead. The thing about Bub's draft is it does seem to be sort of notably top-heavy. You know, those first five picks, Magierna, Toxapex, Latios, Donphan, Thunderous Therian, my god, they're good. Um... And then you get into these mons that are sort of Lycanroc, Mega Absol. Hitmonlee has proven itself, but 
has also not in some cases. Uh, Meganium's the voted pick. Nothing really Bub can do there, but it's it's bad. Um, Miltank's solid. Verizion's okay. Meh, and Escavalier. Depends. Escavalier really wants um, speed support in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I don't think uh, Bub has which like. Which is lacking a little bit. Yeah, I don't think Bub has any speed support at all. I don't think he has. He might have Trick Room. I don't know if Latios or Magiona get Trick Room. I think uh, Latios does, but do you really want to have your 110 base speed Latios running Trick Room for an Escavalier? Yeah, it might be that he has to rely on um, I Paralysis. Don't think, I don't think he has any passers. He does have Paralysis with Thunderous T and other things probably can also I think Mega Absol might be able to pass. Can it? I think it might be able to, yeah. I'm not sure. But does well, we will have Mega Absol gets Agility, doesn't it? Possibly. It but looks again, like it do, should. Do you want to like set up an agility with your Mega Absol and then give it to an Escavalier, though? No. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. He has, like, no speed support, no sticky webs, as far as I can tell. Uh, no. no. I don't think he has Tailwind. I'm pretty sure Latios doesn't get Tailwind, so I don't think he has any Tailwind. I think Latios might get Tailwind, yeah. Does it? I'm not sure. I can't remember, um, honestly. I, like, have this image in my head of, like, a Wi-Fi battle of a Latios setting Tailwind, but I'm not sure if that's just my mind or if it actually is a thing. It does. It does? Okay, so he does have Latios, but again, why do you want to set up Tailwind for an Escavalier with your Latios? Yeah, I think we, we might be over-focusing on Escavalier here, to be honest. But, no, um, no, I'm pretty sure like I that think... last Pokemon on his bench is the only thing he's going to bring every week, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I uh, mean, we've seen it used well previously, in fact, in this league. I mean, Gabriel um, used Escavalier very effectively. The one the beard. Times. The, one, the, the man with the beard yeah. and the... The, the GFX-ness. Of, yeah, but what you said, it. like, it is really <laughs> top-heavy. I feel like the majority of weeks you're going to see those top five, or at least you're going to see, like, four of those mm -hmm. top five, like, every week. So. Magiarn and Toxapex, I don't know a ton about, but I've heard that they're both amazing. Toxapex is, like, the new uh, new bulky water never dies thing. Magiarn is <laughs> yeah. apparently good at whatever it is it does. I think it, like, sets up and sweeps or something like that. Uh, it's just a really nice answer, typing-wise and stat-wise, to a lot of the new threats, especially special threats. Alright. Uh, Latios, of course, is proven to always be good. I don't know how it went round three. Normally, it's in the first two rounds. Uh, Donphan is, in my opinion, like one of the top three spinners in the game, probably. It's really good for spinning, and it has a beautiful move pool to pull from. And decent stats, like, it's speed and spadef is where it falls down, but it's got good fizz def and, like, 120 base attack with, I think, like, 90 HP. So it's not bad by any means. It's not the greatest, but I think it's pretty good. And then Thunderous mm. T is uh, one of the higher-end electric types, I would say. He's not, like, mm. top three, but he's pretty good. Gives you Volt Absorb and is just powerful. Mm. I think if he plays those top five correctly, uh, we could be looking at a team that uses Toxapex quite effectively. Um, you know, you've got two immunities to um, to one of its biggest weaknesses in electric. You've got some really solid resistances and even an immunity to psychic. Um, and he has ways of dealing with ground types too. So it could be that we see a team built around Toxpex quite a lot, getting chip damage, getting those hazards, and then trying to sweep up with something else. Um, so Bob could do it, but as I say... If he becomes over-reliant on those top five, which I hope for his sake he won't, because if he does, he might become easier to play around. Um, but if not, this is still quite a threatening team. Yep, I agree. So with that, we'll move on to number 10, I believe this is. Um, let's see, 16... Yes, number 10. Some quick counting there. Good and we have Sheer Force and the Long Island Goldox. Um, he drafted Empoleon? He did. And he didn't draft another water type other than Charpedo? This is true. Yeah. Um, there are some slight worries here with this team. And that would appear to be one of them. Um, you know, the likes of Empoleon can work with the right team support. And I think, you know, getting something like Empoleon with Delmise is quite cool. Um, the problem with it is, and, and you know, paired with Golbat, who can tank hits too, the problem with that is... Um, the likes of Empoleon and Delmise, they they love wish support. Um, it really helps them helps them out in a defensive role. Um, and I'm not seeing too much in the way of wish support here. I'm not sure maybe as an outside chance a Lola Nine Tails might get it, but I I'm not honestly, seeing any. I honestly don't know. Uh, I don't know. Does Beware get any wish support? I don't think so. No. 
Um, uh, also, something else I want to point out that was a bit of a problem with this draft is uh, he has both of the Isololans with Ninetales and Sandslash. Uh, Delmize, hmm. I think you told me, is Ghost Steel or Ghost, ghost Grass? Ghost Grass. Ghost Grass. Ghost Grass, yeah. Uh, so, you know, he doesn't have, like, a traditional bulky water. Empoleon does not resist fire. Sharpedo is frail. Uh, Beware's most common ability makes him weak to fire. And then yes. you've got Tangrowth, Beware, which will probably be weak to fire a lot, Galvantula, uh -huh. both of the Alolas, Empoleon uh, can't resist it, Delmize is weak to it. He's got like yeah. six fire weaknesses and only two resistances, which is Victini and Garchomp, both of which mm. can take fire moves pretty well, but in Garchomp's case, you don't really want to risk getting burned, which often yeah. comes with fire type attacks, and uh, Victini can switch in on fire type moves, but you don't want Victini to take damage a ton. And a lot of Pokemon that are using offensive fire moves can normally have a ground type coverage or rock type coverage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I think is important to note is that, to be fair, not an in not every team has a, even has a fire type, let alone a traditionally sort of powerfully good one. Um, like we just looked at Bub's team, he doesn't even have a fire type, and he's not the only one. That's why Bub um, is beneath him, obviously. <laughs> well, this is, this is true. But, you know, um, this is a worry that we have with Sheer Force's team. He only has those, well, if we're including Sharpedo, which I suppose we have to for factual And I guess Mega three Aerod resistances. Mega and Mega Aerodactyl. Technically, but, you know. And, you know, Victini and Garchomp are two of the best offensively prowessed um, fire-type resistances going. So, you know, if he can use them effectively, that's, that's fine. Um, but it is a worry, those massive, massive fire weaknesses. But... This is a powerful team, and remember what we were talking about earlier with those speed tierings that some teams have got wrong and some teams have got right? My god, has he got his speed tierings right. Is this... This isn't the team that I said had the best speed tearing, isn't it? I think, this I think like it might be. Place? No, I think this is it. This is it. Is it really? You know, Vic, Victini at 100, Garchomp at 102, um, then you've got a few middling ones, Galvantula 108, Mega Aerodactyl, Sanic Speed, Ninetales is, I think, base 100. Um, uh, regular, then Sharpedo has speed nine boost. Tail, regular Ninetales is 100, so I think Alola is yeah. as well. So he's got speed tierings, like, really well done. And he's also got these slow threats as well. Beware, as a slow threat, is terrifying. Yeah, you better beware. Ho oh, ho! See, we did that. I don't think anyone's made that joke before. Really? There's be no the way. There's no way. I refuse. Uh, I hope he names his Beware Box Ghost. <laughs> Fox Ghost. You didn't watch Danny Phantom as a child, which I feel I bad for you, but <laughs> it's really funny if you watch Danny Phantom as a child, I promise. I'll take your word for it. I hope I but got yeah, at least a um, few chuckles out in the audience. I'm sure you will have done. But um, yeah, Sheer Force, he's got a lot of threats, he's got good speed tearing, I worry for his common weaknesses, but hopefully he can sort that out. Um, yeah, seems to be fair enough. You know, we're getting to the point already where the drafts, are, you know, good drafts are going to be low ranked. But that doesn't mean they're bad drafts. Um, we're already there it's gonna when be it comes tough to that. When he has to go up against Slyro, because as we all know, Slyro has like seven Arcanines on his team. So he's yes. got like seven different Arcanine sets of like Flare Blitz, Flamethrower, Fire Blast mm. set up to go against. Yeah. But I say, we will come on to, to Sly. I, I, I have You words will come on to Sly. Sly. Okay. Well, in, in his dreams. In his <laughs> dreams. He wishes. Uh, let's no, move but, on um, to uh, number nine. Yes. Number nine, that is going to be Kyle. Kyle and the Harlem Gloom Trotters. Um, his logo no longer has a bile plume on it. I hear. That is true. He actually has a gloom on his logo now. Shout out to Andre for doing that. Um, he's talented. We like him. Uh, so let's yes. just start off by saying Kyle has Diancie, and not Mega mm. Diancie, like the new buffed Mega Diancie that can immediately have base one ten speed. He's got like yeah. fifty HP, base one fifty defenses Diancie. He does, um, which is an interesting choice, it has to be said. <laughs> um, yeah. Was he like, We've I mean... We've seen Diancy fail in this league before. Yeah, he's Shout got... To Skyrider. I'm like, thinking here, like, he has... I was thinking about it, like, maybe he just really needed hazards. But then I look up and he's got Pharaoh and Crook. And I'm like, I really don't understand why he has Diancy here. It's, I mean, I think it's his only fairy, but is that really the fairy you want in your life? I don't know. He's clearly got a reason for it. Um, I, I trust that Kyle knows what he's doing. Mm, do I? Kind of. A little bit. <laughs> well, the Maybe. good thing we can say about Kyle is that his main issue is he has Diancie. The rest of his team is pretty solid. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, Megazard X Starmie Ferrothorn is really solid picks up top. He's got some very popular ones to be taken. Reuniclus is always a threat. I love the Persimian pick personally. Um, Persimian, really cool mon. Uh, very nice addition. Powerful. Uh, his voted pick is probably one of the strongest voted picks. Obviously, our coaches didn't have control over their voted picks, and Kyle got Licky Licky. That is um, really good for his team. I don't think he, yeah. unless Diancy can, I don't think he had a wish passer until then, because I'm pretty sure Licky Licky can. Um, I don't know if he did, no. But Licky Licky certainly can, yeah. I know that all of the other mons can't, unless Venomoth is some kind mm. of shock wish passer. But uh, I don't know if <laughs> Diancy can, but even if Diancy can, Licky Licky is way better at it. Yeah, and Licky Licky also takes the pressure off the likes of Crocodile in terms of rock setting, yeah. which I believe... Does Licky Licky get Stealth Rock? I oh, don't God. honestly know, but I was going to say Ferrothorn is what takes that pressure away from uh, from the other... Oh, yeah, that's said, true as well. Um, I, I don't know about Licky Licky. Yeah, and of course he's got like Crobat as a decent defogger um, who can take that pressure off Stormy as the spinner. Stormy is not a Pokemon that wants to spin every week. All I have um, ever heard about people who have Stormy is do not let it be your only hazard removal. Also, it does yeah. not get Stealth Rock. That's a shame. Yes, it is. It's, it's weird, like, which of the sort of Gen 1 normal types and their subsequent updates slash evolutions get Stealth Rocks and which don't, like Clefable does, and I always assume that because Clefable does, Licky Licky ought to. It should, now that you've told me that. I'd also like to point out that uh, the number one Pokemon in the game, Breloom, is sitting there on the bench, ready to wreak havoc. <laughs> I don't think Again, I don't think Breloom not... is as impressive in League as it is in like ladder yeah. play because you can prep for Spore and Rock Tomb and stuff, but that doesn't change yeah. the fact that it's like base one thirty uh, attack with like technician mock punch. Yeah, historically Breloom, again, much like other things that we've pointed out so far, hasn't been amazing in League. Um and has often been overlooked because of that, but maybe maybe Kyle can uh, can can get it a comeback. You never know. Um, I, I hope it's he does. certainly very threatening. Certainly I'm going threatening. to eagerly look forward to seeing Berloom every time he decides to bring it. Yes, I want to see it do work. All right, uh, this I think is... we... we're at the halfway point and we're almost at 40 we minutes, are. so we need to like speed up these last eight. Not like super yes. fast, but like a little bit quicker. Yes. So let's so, just skip number eight because he's unimportant. It was Jim. So oh. uh, on from Jim, we go to number. I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. But uh, we got um, we've got Jim and the Pine Cove Ramblers at eight. Um, wait, this, wait, this wait, 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 wait. What is his team name? Pine Cove Ramblers. I believe that that weird spelling is supposed to be a, a V sound. But he, dude, the Meath Mamoswines or the Heath Mamoswines, whatever it was called, had like one of the best logos of all time. That is true. That is true. But we've got he he's got he's gone with a more local team for him the Irish connection. Um, that was the Pineco drunk. Potentially, <laughs> uh, probably I'd even say. Um, Jim's team. Is scare. Stu it's pretty scare. Stupid crazy bulk going on there. Um, you know Latias Nido Queen the Vaporeon Sarina core, which I have to say is one of my favourite cores of all time already. I, I love think, that core. I think. And oh yeah, Celesteela. Oh yeah, Celesteela, which I've heard is like. Skarmory 2.0 or something, it's like ridiculously oh, it's, it's, good bulk. It's, it's like Skarmory, but instead of Roost, it gets Leech Seed. Because that makes and sense. And no one really knows why. Uh, I think that Jim also, I don't know who we said this about before, but uh, top heavy, and then uh, he got a little bottom heavy on his draft as well, and then it it's a little middling in the middle. with uh, Yeah, a little bit. He got voter pick Alola Persian, which is, I don't know if it's like actually any good, but I hate it just because it exists. <laughs> I think it could do work. But, like, his, his middle picks, they look middling, but Giglith has the buff now with Sand, which, to be fair, doesn't uh, really do the rest of his team any favours. Yeah, he doesn't really... I mean, Latias, Inte, Vaporeon don't really want to be taking Residual. It doesn't no. affect Nidoking and Celesteela, but... Or Nidoqueen, I mean, not King. Mm -mm. Uh, Raichu is, like... I guess I'd put him, like, mid-tier electric type. He's not bad, yeah. but he's, like... He's one of the lesser ones. That's, like, one of the electric types you get when everyone else took their electric types in round four. Yeah. But uh, Rabombi, I immediately hated, but you have informed me, is like, got the stats in Quiver Dance to not be horrible, but I feel like yeah. if it's one of those Pokemon that relies, like, it's relies entirely on Quiver Dance to be a threat, then 
that'll it looks too yeah it, it'll it make it a bit too. of an issue he could prove us wrong which would be great but oh yeah i don't know i also never figured out if you have to mega first turn in this league or not so he has mega gyarados which is a good mon rather it has to mega turn one or not but it is better if you mm. can like mind game a bit and keep your flying yeah. instead of dark because water flying yeah. is a better typing and I think, really, it's those those two are two of the main ones to watch out for, to see how he uses them, Rebombi and Mega Gyarados. Also, I want to say Medicham, that last pick. Medicham, people know how much of a threat Mega Medicham is, but regular Medicham ain't nothing to sleep on either. Oh, yeah. regular I mean, Medicham still is... base 80 attack with huge power, yeah, I think, or pure power, whatever one. It's, which, it does the same thing. It's, it is scary. Yeah. Normal Medicham is not something to sleep on. Uh, you also told me Serena is, like, a good spinner, and uh, yes. Latias is a great defogger. So he's doing well on that front with removal. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, and, uh, again, he, he has used Celestealer effectively before, but we're not focusing on how people have used their mons before. But it is worth remembering for the rest of the season. Let's see if he can continue. Yep. Uh, so. He's got he's got a really good setup with that... Uh, Steel Dragon at the front, and then uh, Intay and Vaporeon mm. are both notoriously good as fire and water types. Wish passing yeah. with Vaporeon, burning sacred fires with Intay. But that's a, yeah. that's about all I have to say. Pretty much me too. So um, on to number seven. Number seven, we have Ethan and the Tennessee Tynamos. Who has old um, Skarmory, which is still just Skarmory. Yeah. Yeah, he's kind of gone old school a little bit to start with. You know, Mega Pinsa Skarm, uh, Raikou, um... Yeah, some 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 cool threatening stuff there. Uh, Kamoo is a pick that we both like, isn't it? Oh, dude, Kamoo is possibly my favorite. I feel so like part of the crowd when I say this because you know it's the pseudo legendary of Gen Seven, and I'm everyone saw it and was like, oh my goodness, a fighting dragon. But Kamoo is legitimately like in terms of just the moves and stats and mm. just its design. I absolutely love Kamoo, <coughs> and I really hope. Oh yeah. I really hope that it can prove to be a good mon in a. Uh, in league it doesn't have the greatest move pool diversity but it is really strong with the moves that it gets and it can switch yeah. between special and physical and it has clanging scales which is like the best alternative to draco meteor we've ever had i mean that dual stab of dragon and fighting is threatening very threatening indeed and he sort of backs it up with these these sort of cool lower tier picks that have become sort of the norm gorgeist skuntank you know um these are pokemon that are really coming into the fore in league format and are really putting in a nice shift he and also he also gets all of the gorgeist forms he does that's he true, didn't yeah. have to pick one he can you never know what gorgeist is going to be coming to the game mm, that's true and then we get a bit even further down and i would say this is top three benches um we've already seen one in the form of erics which is very threatening we're going to see another one in a little bit but here we have mudsdale meloetta suicune my god that's a bench that is my God, amazing. I really Mudsdale is another. That's probably like my top three from Gen Seven. I really hope mm. he does well with it as well. Uh, it's, yeah. Stamina is a cool ability. Um, and Meloetta and Suicune have proven time and again that they can do things well. Meloetta is like probably one of my favorite defensive mons in the league. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Ethan's got a pretty strong, strong showing here, and worth mentioning, he also has Sun because he's got Torkoal. Ah, uh, beautiful. And he got Mawile he got Mawile as his voted pick, which I don't think really matters. Yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, I don't think Mawile. Uh, you know, Mawile we could see a little bit of use from. Maybe um, like one week it has a really niche role, but I don't see it like coming yeah. I definitely would be absolutely shocked if Mawile showed up to three matches this game. Okay. I could see it getting like two really niche roles in like separate games, but I would be amazed if he out of the other mods, you look at his first seven mods, and you think Mawile is going to be one of his picks over that, and then his bench, like... Yeah, and know. you look at Mawile's typing, Steel and Fairy, he has a Skarmory, and he has a Flawgis. Yeah, speaking of which, is like, a really good matchup for, like, the best yeah. specially, one of the top... You think special defensive mods, and you think Flawgis, and then physical defensive Skarmory. Like, those are yeah, two of the mods that both. come to your mind. He also has Raikou, which is, like, <clears throat> top three electric types in league format, I would say. It's definitely mm. it's definitely up there as one of the best. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a strong team from Ethan. It is a strong team, worthy of sort of top fifty percent, and I think we could see it going places. I really do. I wouldn't um, be surprised if, as long as Ethan knows what he's doing. I've never seen him play a Pokemon game before, so I don't know if no. he does. But uh, <laughs> if he has any idea of what he's doing, I wouldn't be surprised if he is moved up next week. Yeah, I would think so. I would think so. Um, 
But speaking of moving up, we'll go on to the number six position. This is going to be Alex, Wansi Boehner, and Birmingham Spritzy. The guy now, with Tapu Lele got in sixth? What, Shroom? Well, we have reasoning. Fear not. Now, first off, um, he's had to sort of move around his, his mons because of pricing issues, which means, speaking of those scary benches, Mega Alakazam, Swallow, Tapu Lele. Yeah, it turns out that Alex doesn't understand how math works, so his, like, first two picks are in the bench, <laughs> and then it looks like yes. he drafted Rhydon, followed by Flareon. Yeah, that which is which is good to know. I, I had a bit of a giggle at that, but that bench is strong. <clears throat> That's a strong bench. That is the strongest bench. Yeah, I would agree. The sense it, it it wouldn't be the strongest bench if it didn't end up the way the math yeah. worked out. But with, if we look um, at it post math, it's definitely the strongest bench because Tapu Lele, as I've been informed, is like the best Tapu and is like one of the best yes. mons in the game right now. It is, it is. And Mega um, Alakazam is a really good mon, especially now yeah. that uh, he doesn't have to... Alakazam normally is already fast, I'm pretty sure, but uh, yeah. Mega Alakazam is, like, Sanic fast as opposed to just fast, and he doesn't have to wait for that turn anymore. That's very true, it's very true. And, um, you know, speaking of fast threats, it's not only consigned to the bench, we see Doug Trio, who got that buff to base 100 attack, really good partner for Tapu Lele, um take on those steel types that Tapu Lele doesn't necessarily want to. And of course you've got Weavil there as well. One of the premier who is just, ice type threats. Yeah, just good lord, the threats. Now, the problem, the big problem we have with Alex's team, um, we worried about the bulk. Now, I know what you're thinking, he's got Porygon 2. Yes. Now, we can't argue that because Porygon 2 resists all of the moves and it doesn't die. But... Let's go worst case scenario and say that it does die. Or it's not even I, there. We worry. Week. Mm, we worry for the bulk because Rhydon, yeah, sure, it's bulky, but it's quad weak to two quite common attacking types. Flareon is good, especially bulky, but you don't see it in that role very often. Uh, Dragonite two, on top of that, prefers to be offensive. On top of that, those two Pokemon you just named before Dragonite are both weak to like the same things. Mm, yeah. They're all, they have three common weaknesses between water... Uh, Water, ground, and... Oh, well, only two weaknesses, actually. Two. Or, did I for, yeah, yeah, only two. My bad. Yeah. And yeah, you you look at the likes of Dragonite, who can be bulky, but prefers to go offensive. Lantern. Ah, it's... Lantern's not it's like... It's got good base HP, yeah. but it's it's not massively defensive. Yeah. Lantern isn't a bad Pokemon, but it's not what you look at to be, like, your bulky water of the year. No. No. So, it is a bit of a worry with Alex's team. Like, once P2 goes down... Where does he turn for switch-ins? Which, to be fair, to that'll only threats. happen, like, when the universe explodes. But still, assuming Very it true. does Very happen, true. he's he's got, yeah. like, nothing for defense. I Ideally, what I see, I think you and me talked about this, what we see Alex's draft doing is P2 lasting long enough to lower the opponent enough to where these incredibly fast, deadly threats can just come in and win anyways. Yeah, they just come in one by one and don't switch out until they die. Yeah, which, you know, is not the best strategy to go with, but if it works, it works. Alex yeah, is going to have to just show us if he can do it or not. Yeah, very true. Um, so hopefully, for his sake, he can, but that is a worry that we have going into this one. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much all for Alex. Uh, it's still very threatening. And we'll move on to number five on the list, and that is going to be Quill and Juventes. Uh, it's actually, if you read the name correctly right there, it says Quill of the Anime Union. Ah, of course, yes. Make Clearly sure uh, shout out to myself and Trip. <laughs> Very much so. Um, yeah, this team. Um, Thunderous Eye, which is arguably like possibly the best electric, fast electric type niche in the mm. in the league format. I think that yeah. aren't you the one who champions Thunderous Eye as like the best? Very much electric? so. Yeah, I, I think thought so. I think it is easily, possibly the best. If if not, it's certainly like top three. I can like, definitely without agree without doubt is in top three. I'd have to sit down and think about number one, but it is definitely top mm. three. Uh, Manaphy, yeah. which it is Manaphy. Uh, yeah. Silvely, which he gets access to all eighteen types of Silvely, which uh, mm. Silvely is not amazing just looking off of its base stats, but getting to have like every type of it yeah. and your opponent not knowing until they're in battle can make a big difference I think and that's gonna it definitely makes it better than if it was just Silverly with like choosing a type yeah absolutely um, and you know then things get a bit weird with his draft um, it's, a sort, it's sort of quite light in the middle it would seem Fortress yeah sure Fortress is y your standard hazard stacking spinner and that's fair then you get these mons that are kind of yeah they're not bad they're pretty good Drapion eh, it's 
is pretty good. Coffee Grigas is pretty good. Espion is relatively untested, but it's got decent enough stats. And then Vanillux, uh, Shardy likes it, so it's probably bad. Yeah, I would say so. It's also like an ice cream cone, so it's yeah, like one of not... the it's one of the prime examples of why we still have to deal with Gen Oneers. So that's enough to make me not like hmm. it. But then you I, get the to thing... what is like one of the best, also one of oh, the yeah. best benches. Like this, this is, is a very solid bench. This is like Mega Meg... Mega Garchomp, Terrakion, Talonflame. I mean, yes, Talonflame has been nerfed to hell and back, but still a very effective revenge I keep, killer. I keep forgetting that. You're right. Talonflame is like nowhere near as good because it's like almost mm. never at 100. For those of you who don't know, uh, I assume probably all of you do, but just in case, because I didn't know, uh, Talonflame's mm. ability, Gale Wings, has been nerfed to where you only get priority flying if you're at maximum HP. And as yeah. we all know with Talonflame, it's at maximum HP maybe like 1% of the time you see it. <laughs> yeah, it's basically nerfed one of its some of its best sets, like just the banded Brave Bird suddenly isn't as good anymore, and especially that Spidef bulk up set um, has been nerfed to hell and back because it relies basically on that priority healing. Yeah, it's to, it's, to make it good and priority acrobatics without speed investment. That's the whole point of it. It's horrible what they've done um, to Smogon Bird. Like it, it was basically yeah. the Pokemon, and now it's just like garbage. Yeah, so he's he's got these very powerful offensive threats. Um, Talonflame, I suppose, can be used as a revenge killer because it's still quick. Yeah, it's uh, like just base 110, it. but it also has like a lower attack stat than Amoongus. That's very true, which is worrying when you think about it like that. <laughs> um, and there you get this sort of middle pick where nothing really stands out as being spectacular, but they can all do a job. You know, you look at them and you'll go, yeah, actually, they're they're pretty good. They're yeah, pretty good. I, I you wouldn't maybe you wouldn't probably say more than that. You look at the top. Four, I would say. Thunder's Eye and Manaphy, like, top-tier good mons. They're yeah. S-rank for a reason. Silvly, untested, but theoretically speaking, it's, like, sort of like Baby Arceus. So, yeah. it's, again, untested, but it can be really good. Fortress, <coughs> you know, there's never, or there's rarely going to be any shock factor with Fortress or doing something mm. different. But it's so good yeah. at what it does that it doesn't matter. Absolutely. And then you get to those next four, Drapion, Cafagragus, Espeon, and Vanillix, like, Espeon's pretty untested. Vanillix, Cafagragus, and Drapion have all been used poorly and rather well. It just depends on mm. how you can use them and how their matchup goes. Uh, Talonflame, like, it's going to be interesting to see nerfed Talonflame used in any capacity. Mm. Uh, Terrakion, like, kills all of the things because Rock Fighting yeah. Stab with its stats is amazing. Uh, Megachomp and... is out because it's, like, base 170 mm. attack. And then we've got one of your favorites. Oh, yes, yes. His voted pick was Scyther, which I think is probably the strongest voted pick. Uh, or at least one of the top three. I love Scyther. I think it's brilliant. I don't know why it's consistently ranked so low. It is really, really, really good. Yeah, man. There was this one time where I saw it dodge a Stone Edge and win a game. That was a great time. Um, in fact, actually, I suppose we could probably talk uh, about that with one of the people coming up. Because I think he also saw that game. Um, but we won't talk about him until a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think Slyro might have caught that game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he like was a very big advocate of that game. Mm. But, yeah, very much so. Uh, anyways, that's all I have to say on Quill. Are you good on Quill? Yeah, yeah. I think basically it's look out for those middle four and see if they can be used effectively. All right. The rest of it is really good. We can move on to number four now. I think, is this the last Tapu team? Uh, I think it might be, yes. Did we not put any of the Tapu teams in the top three? We did not. Oh, man, we're so good at our jobs. But anyways, we uh, we've got Jack and what's his team name? Jack is the Wolverhampton Weevils. This is just Weevil. Oh, this is um, just Weevile. I didn't this realize. This is just Weevil. I forgot that his name was Jack. Okay, cool. Mm. So I actually know who this is. Uh, he's <laughs> this got, guy. Yeah, this cool. guy. He's got like the first five picks are just Tapu Bulu, which I've heard is amazing. It's, it's potentially. It's like potentially the second best Tapu after Lele or maybe Tapu yeah. Koko is. One of those two is like second place. But Bulu is a nuke. It yeah, just hits so hard. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Zard Y is proven to always be a good Pokemon. Like, Zard Y uh -huh. is never not going to be good, no matter how the meta changes. Yeah. Uh, Scizor is, you know, it's Scizor. It can do a lot of things. It's uh -huh. not as good as Mega Scizor, typically, but it's it's a good Mon. Primarina is untested, but uh, I think it, it's Water Fairy, so that's pretty good typing. And I yeah, think that it's, and it's not... massive special attack. Massive yeah, it's got a good attack. special attack. Uh, we've got Cresselia, which, uh, yeah... That's that's Cresselia. Mm -mm. Uh, then we got Smeargle, which I, it's there. Uh, we have Alola Raichu again, untested. But uh, what's its typing? Is it Electric Psychic? Uh, electric Psychic. Yeah, yes. I think it's like the only one. So I'm not really sure where it falls on the ladder of 
good electric types yet, because I've kind of got a setup ladder of good electric types, but I'm mm. interested to see where it ends up. Superior is, you know, superior. It does what it does, uh -huh. and it's pretty good at it. Turtonator was his viewer pick. I have no idea if Turtonator is, like, even feasibly good or not, but I guess we'll <laughs> find out. I, this is going to be an interesting one to watch, Turtonator, because it's it's just weird. Yeah. It, it, even, even, like, <clears throat> as far as I'm aware with sort of people trying out ones in the new meta, Turtonator has not been used very often in comparison to a lot of the other new mods. Uh, so yeah, that doesn't surprise it's, me. It's, it's uncharted territory, basically. Then we have his bench, which is normal Gallade, can do work, you know, you don't typically see the normal mm. Gallade, you know, where, yeah. whereas with, like, Mega Gardevoir, it's not, un it's pretty usual, actually, to see regular Gardevoir, because that's a good mod. Yeah. Uh, Mega Gallade is often used normally, but uh, normal Gallade you don't see often, so I'm interested in that and see if he can do it well. Zygarde 10%, I've heard that Zydogo is actually like pretty cool and good at it what is. he does, so it is. I'm also base interested. Base 100 attack, base 115 speed with Dragon Dance and Ooh. that brilliant um, thousand uh, arrows move, which Oh, he still uh, has access to types. those. Mm, yeah. I thought that only I, believe 50, so. I thought you had to be 50% to have that. No, that's really good. No. I'm v definitely interested in seeing Zydogo work then. And then, of course, because, you know, Cresselia wasn't enough, he's got Umbreon. Yeah, this is basically the story of Jack's draft. You've got these massive powerhouses like Tapu Bulu, Megazard Y, Scizor, Primarina. Even when it's set up enough, Superior, um, he's got some cool setup. Zygarde 10% is the main one there. And then he's just got like, okay, I'll take Cresselia and Umbreon now. Uh, break me. Yeah, Umbreon and Cresselia... Just inviting to break him. The usual problems you have with Umbreon and Cresselia is the absolute momentum kill, because it doesn't just do it to your mm. opponent, it does it to you as well. But yeah. with, like, the amount of power that the majority of his draft just has, just from existing, I feel like he may be able to deal with that a lot better. Yeah, and I mean, one of the things that that core of Cresselia and Umbreon isn't necessarily going to want to deal with is, of course, Strong Bug. But he's got Sizzle, who is one of the strongest bugs. Yep. So, so he's already taken one of the biggest threats to his core. Not only that, but um, Zard Y, like, Zard Y doesn't like to switch into a lot of things, but bugs is one of those yeah. things. And I mean, there's where that voted pick, Turtonator, could come in handy. Massive physical defense, decent enough special bulk, good resistance, and the ability to hit back on those bugs. So, yeah, he's got some nukes, he's got some very powerful core work in the defensive department, and then he's got the trickiness with the Smeargle, uh, which of course, you know, could basically do anything. It's not going to be a standout performer in any one role, but it can just, it can just, of course, it can run any move, so it can just slip in there and kind of do whatever the team needs it to do. If it needs one Geo turn, it sort pass. of has set up, there it is. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not, man? A cool team, worthy of being top four, I think. Yeah. Um, so now let's move on to, to the real reason everyone is here, the top three. Uh-huh, yes. I know of one person who's thinking right now, wait a minute, they haven't said my name yet, what is going on? Well, uh, I think we're about to say it, aren't we? Uh, no, we're not. But uh, Oh no, that <laughs> comes, to... it comes soon. Yeah, it comes but, right uh, after. But anyways, we've got uh, Paul, and is he still the Thunderbolt and Wanderers? No, Wanderers? he is the West, West Coast Wingles now. Ah, uh, good, so I can't mess up the word Wanderers anymore. <laughs> the West True. Coast Wingles. Uh, yeah. Paul, we have here. Why Wingle of all Pokemon? But anyways, uh, he's got Jirachi and Sylveon. Like, is his first two this, picks? Like, I hate this. This man. is this draft is so strong in so many ways. Running through it really quickly. Jir I mean, yeah, Jirachi, Sylveon. That's so solid. Scolipede is just a threat, and it can pass things around. Top that off with Hydreigon. Like, Hydreigon is Hydreigon. You know, it, it be what it do. Um. And then you've got so much in the way of hazard removal. Uh, Sand Slash is there. Hitmontop is there. Mantine, the new buffed Mantine with uh, Roost and Defog, is there. So he's got all this hazard removal. Uh, Alolan Marak is just such a good stop to so many new threats. It's just become that, that guy. All and I've still been hearing Mark. about Alolan forms is that Marowak and Muck stop like all of the things. Yeah, they do. They do. Uh, and what I think Paul has done very well is that he's taken these defensive mons. Um, the, the thing about a lot of these defensive mons, you know, the likes of Hitmontop, Alola Marak, if it's going bulky, um, and lower down the card, Mesprit, um, is lack of recovery. And look at those first two mons, Jirachi Sylveon, very accomplished wish passes. I think he's done that very well. He's got he's got these this bulky core that can go offensive, that can also pass wishes, um, 
they get U-turn and baton pass respectively into those defensive mons that can provide support for the team and then pave for the way for the likes of Scolipede and Hydreigon to put in massive amounts of work. Um, the bench is strong. Roserade, Mainetric and Mesprit. You know, Roserade, really good. Very good pick indeed. Mainetric, eh. I guess, you know, I needed an electric type. Yeah, Manetric is, like, my second favorite Pokemon of all time, but objectively speaking, even I can agree, it's probably the, like, the, the worst weakest. Pick. Yeah, the weakest pick out of this draft. That's a good yeah. way to word it. It's probably, like, th the one that'll be used the least and whatnot, but, you mm. know, it's still good to, like, Manetric has decent base speed. I know it's over 100. Yeah. I don't know what it is exactly. And he's got decent enough special attack to be the Volt Switcher you need him to be. Yeah, and then you, 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 you support that with Mesprit, who is just a consummate threat. Um, bulky, offensive, massive move pool, great mon. I, um, I love Mesprit, but I will say this, it is basically the poor man's Mew, which isn't a bad thing. Like, it's yeah, good to have a poor all, man's Mew. All. Did anyone draft um, Mew? I believe the answer to that is no. What? And I'd be correct. The answer to that is no. No one dropped Mew. I was just Mew. thinking, like, when did we talk <laughs> about Mew? We never did. No, we didn't. No one dropped Mew. But anyways, um, Mesprit... Mesprit, uh, basically the poor man's Mew, which, you know, if you're going to be a poor man of something, Mew is a good option, so it, yeah. can, it can do a lot of different things. Yeah, Paul's team is just sort of super solid. Um, it got very hard to choose between teams when we got to this point. Paul's team is really solid. He's got all of the hazard removal. Um, I think, perhaps... like, we had trouble deciding where people went from, like, two through six, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like, one, we, did, we were we automatically in agreement of. But, like, two we through were. six, it was not really a toss-up. I think we were able to, like, get two to four and then set them apart, and then five and six and set them apart. But mm. for a little bit, it was kind of touch and go on who was going to end up where. Yeah, very much so. Uh, but Paul, sitting at three, is no disrespect to him and his team. It's a very, very solid draft. He is a very strong drafter, like, historically, he always has been. And this is no exception. No, I'm absolutely disrespecting him. He's garbage. But anyways. Ah, well. um, it's true. Let's move on to who, um, really, who really matters. Second place. Yeah. Uh, Here we, we have um, Slyro, and I assume he's still the Pittsburgh Pyroars. Uh, yes, he is. Where he's drafted um, Lando I, Clefable, Arcanine, Slowking, Arcanine, Komala, Lucario, Arcanine, Electabuzz, Excelgor, Go Go to Zizvira pick, uh, Arcanine, Drudigan, Wobbuffet, and then Arcasand, which is Palisand. Yes. I mean, basically, let's look at it. Surprise, surprise, Sly has Arcanine again. I feel like no I mentioned that. No one saw that coming. I, I think maybe once or twice. But it's important to cement this in the, in the minds of our viewers that Sly does indeed have Arcanine again. On top of that, they also allowed Lando I, which he drafted. Mm, yeah, Lando I with the Sheer Force. That is spooky scary. But they didn't even nerf it to, what is it, Sand Force is its other ability? They gave it Sheer Force. Yeah. Now, his draft is just really solid throughout, even though at the bottom, looking at the rankings, you'd think it would be a top-heavy draft, but it really isn't. So, like, Lando, I, Clefable, Arcanine, Slowking, I mean, those four picks alone could be on, could walk onto any one team. Yep, and then he's got, uh, after that, he's Kamala. got Kamala. Which Ooh, you've, Kamala, 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 you've Kamala, told Kamala. Me is I like, love Kamala. You've told me it's amazing, and it has rapid spin, and yep. does great things. Then he it has, has, it's one of the best spinners, I think. Rapid spin, wish, and the inability to be uh, statist. I'm and excited. Utah. I'm excited. And good attack. It's so good. I'm excited to see where it ends up in the whole rapid spin hierarchy that we have in League Format. Yes. Then he has Lucario, which you don't see incredibly often, but when you do see it, it sweeps all the things. This no, the thing about Lucario is it started like it's a it's a Pokemon that you should see everywhere in draft format. You should because it's so good. It's possibly the most threatening setup sweeper in the format. Uh, simply because of all the options it has. You know, Nasty Plot, Swords, Dance, Agility, Calm Mind, I believe it gets Bulk Up as well. S all of the priority. Um, and just incredibly powerful attacks. That Stab Close Combat is super powerful. And really good coverage as well. Um, but then you get into the last six. And to t I'll take you through the tiers first. FYI is the lowest tier. Um, and E is the second lowest. And the tiers go FYI, E, FYI, E, E, E. So you think, oh, that's a weak... Bottom six. I would, no, no, no. Before you it's continue, before you continue, I would like to say that we do not, uh, we do not represent the team that prices these mons and puts them into no. tiers, because I do. think probably about three of these Pokemon should not be in the tier that they're in. Yeah, because you've got Electabuzz, who it's it's an NFE, but it's still a very solid electric type. It's it does exactly what you need an electric type to do. Big move pool. Electabuzz is really good. 
Excel Gore, we love here at the Battle Union. We love it. Excel Gore is a god of a Pokemon. We all know it to be true. We're not really it's... sure why, but we just like to talk about it all the time. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's, there's, I, did it do something good once? I don't know. Probably, I, I don't know. Like, it probably like was able to take out a Pokemon or two in a game that it shouldn't have. Mm. So yeah, like one or two or six. Yeah, um, something like that. Maybe, maybe, maybe from someone who's involved with the league. Um, someone who we oftentimes call Hitler Meon. <laughs> yeah, it triggers Frito, is basically the answer there. Um, Go Goat's viewer pick, it's solid enough, it has options. Drudigan. Drudigan is mm, really to, good. I had to prep for Drudigan once. I had a like super bulk team. I was one of those people who went full on bulk, because it was when I was still new to the yeah. league. I had like uh, Melodic, Mandibuzz, um, I think I had Amoongus, and something else stupid that was fat and I shouldn't have had. But uh, it was, uh, oh, it was Aromatisse. I also had Aromatisse. Drudigan has the move pool and the stats to two-hit KO about everything in the game. Including all the mons that you just said. Yeah, all the mons I just said, Drudigan was able to two-hit KO all of them if it was a sheer force life orb set. So yeah. Like, and not only that, it can set up rocks and it can be bulky too. Like, I definitely think Drudigan uh -huh. should be like a tier up, but yeah. it, is, uh, I mean, it is a good mon. And then you've got Wobbuffet, who is a potential game changer. A potential game changer if used correctly and in the right situation, so fair enough. Palisand's kind of untested as yet, but it's got these cool options that it can use. Uh, reliable recovery is always nice, and a cool typing. So Sly has taken a really, really interesting team of massive threats, and he's used those low-tier picks really effectively to the point where he can get some of the top-tier threats early on and make up for it really well. This is a very intelligent draft, which I never thought I'd be saying about Slyro. He's also, like, he's using Pokemon he's familiar with, like maybe Arcanine, yeah. for instance. Perhaps. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's got this really nice mix in his draft of intelligent low-tier picks, really, really top-tier high-up picks, and Mons that he's used before and knows the benefits and, and shortcomings of. So this is a strong draft from Sly. Um, I'm expecting him to put in a good showing with it. I really look forward to it. And I know Sly is not going to be happy when this video comes out because he likes to claw his way up from the bottom. But I think this yeah. is the second time, second season in a row, we put Sly up high. Yeah, sorry, Sly. Uh, the expectations for you are incredibly high. Do not let us down. We will punish you if you do. Exactly. Well, let's move on to number one, which, like, the yeah. minute... I didn't know this at the time, but uh, I hadn't looked at the drafts until yesterday when we started putting these uh, this list together. And uh, as soon as I got to a draft and said this guy's name, Shroom was instantly like, oh, that's, yeah, that's going to be our number one. <laughs> was... Yeah, um, it's, it's Leo, uh, Six Foot Hacks and the Durham Drudigans. Um, this team, there are shortcomings to it, but they are so minuscule. Um, he took a Necrozma round one, which is just a godly Pokemon. Uh, the new legend, um, it's got so many options, set up on both sides, super bulk with an ability akin to filter, so reducing those special, uh, super effective hits, reliable recovery, stealth rock, status, all of the things. Um, also, it it's, has... uh, it's only psychic type, right? So it doesn't have yes. a, like, a slew of common weaknesses, no. like dark no. ghost and bug, which aren't the most usual offensive typings? Yeah, and he's got answers to them going on later on, but um, ne Necrozma is... It's a, it, again, it's a game changer. The amount of games I've seen in League already where Necrozma has just come in late game, set up, and swept teams. It's dangerous. It's very dangerous. And it's not the only thing, because he then takes like one of the best mixed sweepers going. Like, we talked about how good of a sweeper uh, Lucario is, but as mixed attackers go, Infernape, really solid. I think, like, Infernape and Lucario are both <coughs> probably in the top three of mixed sweepers and attackers. I would think so. I would think so. Um, then you support that with Shaman who is, it's a Shaman, it's a I, pixie. It does I what it does. I love Shaman. Shaman is yeah. such a good Pokemon. And the round four, C-ranked Mimikyu, wow. that, is, that is an absolute coup for Leo. An absolute steal. Yeah, Mimikyu, Mimikyu is from, probably one of the most busted Pokemon around. Yeah, from what you've told me, it's an amazing mon. I haven't seen much of it yeah. myself, so I look forward to seeing Leo use it. Uh, it's super good. We go on to his fifth pick, and he's got Jolteon, which isn't like, you know, it's not top-tier electric type, but it's definitely not bottom-tier either. It's one of those yeah. first, like, mid-range fast electrics that people tend to go for. Yeah, I think what well, we, we sort of we sort of organized it as, in our minds, when we were talking about this yesterday, we sort of, if there were, like, three tiers of electric types, you've got the top tier of them, and when they all go, the first thing people go is, oh, I'll take Jolteon then. 
Jolteon is definitely like the top of the mid tier, I would say, yeah, which is a confusing sentence when you call the number one's top tier. But mm. uh, Jolteon is definitely up there as one of the good go tos. If you don't want to like pick up Vryko or Thun one of the Thundies immediately, Jolteon is who you're going to end up getting once you get to the mid tier area. Yeah. But uh, then he's got Seismitoad, <laughs> which has proven to be a good mon. It like I feel like it similar to Excelgor, like wrecked someone at some point in our lives, and I just yeah, I think it did. Yeah, um, it like made someone cry an entire rain. Yeah. And made it swift swim for the whole battle. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure that happened. I I I just I can't think. Who I just keep it hearing like been. the cries of a moose in the background, like yeah, slowly yeah. drowning. Yeah, I, I believe it left someone crawling in their skin, but... Yeah, those we'll wounds, they will not time. heal. But they anyways, uh, then we get to round 7, where for some reason Registeel still wasn't picked. Yeah, so that went, and that's just stupid bulk. Uh, Garboda round 8, one of those Pokemon that's starting to come into its own, uh, with a lot of options. The the viewer pick, Pukamuku, is genuinely not to be slept on. I have seen this thing beat teams entirely by itself. It's it's ridiculous. It's like Shuckle 2.0, isn't it? It like it's even bulkier or something like that, yeah, but it has no crazy. it has no attacking moves as the drawback. Yeah, which it doesn't need them. It, it does not. Yeah, I was need about them. to say like that's not really a drawback anyway. No. Uh, then we get to his bench, which isn't the strongest bench, but still doesn't really slack that much. He's got Hitmonchan, no. which is kind of like a it's like a meh Hitmon. I might even call it the worst of the three. It depends kind of on the team, mm. but. Uh, you know, it can rapid spin, it can bulk up, it can, it's can. it got coverage with the punches to hit here and there. Yeah. Uh, it's also got good priority with both bullet and mock punch, it's pretty good yeah. options. Uh, Zoroark, as long as the player knows what they're doing, Zoroark is a serious threat. Especially if your opponent yeah. does not often know how to deal with Zoroark, which a lot of people yeah, don't. Can be really most people, a lot of people don't use Zoroark, so a lot of people, conversely, don't know how to deal with Zoroark. So it can be a mm. major threat. And then Tauros is just a good Pokemon. Yeah, Tauros is just one of those ones where it's like... I. I'm, I'm kind of, I, I, I need just a, a powerhouse, something that has great physical attack, it can it can outspeed a lot of common threats. Oh, Taurus is still free? Nice! And they take Taurus and it proceeds to wreck face. Um, yeah, this draft is really very scary indeed. There's, there's like, there's, there's so little inherently think, wrong with it. I think the, apart really from... the only flaw we can point out is hazard removal. Yeah, he's got Hitmonchan as his only hazard removal, but he doesn't really have, like, if if we're looking at Stealth Rock as the most common form... It definitely is, and they're... He doesn't have his, any weaknesses to it. None of his Pokemon are weak to rock. It's all neutral or uh, mm. resisted. And on top of that, uh, most often, you know, when you don't have to worry about that, people are always like, oh, but Toxic Spikes are going to destroy you. Garboder is amazing for stopping Toxic Spikes. Yeah. You just people are going to have to get creative against him with that, like... Um, I can see he, if anyone, if anything's going to be a problem for him, it's going to be like just regular spikes because he's got a lot of Volt Turn going on here, um, yeah. which is a credit to his team because it can put in massive amounts of work. And you know what? Um, and he he's got hazards of his own, which really help that out. Like Garboda is going to be quite crucial in that respect, putting up spikes and T spikes with his his amount of um, of of U turning and Volt switching around. You that's going to be very dangerous. You know what hazard you see the least of that isn't sticky webs? Spikes. Exactly. People go for toxic spikes before they go for regular spikes. Mm. And it's, uh, yeah, I don't, I feel like maybe one, two matches tops, it causes him a problem, but he'd still be able, he'd still have a chance to win. I think that yeah. this is one of the few times I look at a team and think, you know what? You're fine without a ton of hazard removal. You'll manage. I think so. Like, yeah, I agree. Like, the only other thing I can really see that comes to mind is the ground weakness. His ground weakness is fairly pronounced. Um... But there are ways around that. He has he has methods of dealing with it. Not too many of them, you know. His his water type is Pukamuku, which is intriguing. That's definitely um, a seismitoad is there though. It is. I was testing you, and you did pass that test. Congratulations! <laughs> Absolutely nailed the landing there. Stuck uh, the landing. You're right. He does have a bit of a ground problem, but Shaman is so good at dealing with ground mm. types. So yeah, I think, he has enough offensive presence to try and deal with them, I think. Because, I mean, like, Shaman, base 100 in all stats, it can definitely take mm. ground-type moves. It, it's really only worry is if the opponent has fire coverage, and even then it can only take a hit or two. And then Seed Flare, just get the drops. Easy. Yeah, and he's got enough neutral stupid bulk 
to deal with that. And even some of his weaknesses can, can, we, can deal with Grub. I was about to say, can we even count Registeel as being weak yeah. ground? Does that... It's difficult to do, really, because Registeel will tank hits all day, every day. Uh, you've sure got to be very strong to save it now. Could, but... It could probably take, like, three Earthquakes from a Garchomp, or two Earthquakes mm. from a Garchomp, die on the third. I would, I would be willing to wager on that. Yeah, I think, yeah... A, a, one of the other good things about this, it's just the amount of game changers he's got. He's got so many potential game changers on this team um, that can just swing a match in your favor, uh, which you don't know which one of them is going to be the big one for him in any given week. So he's going to be dangerous to prep for as well. Um, I agree. I, I think, yeah, definite shoe in at number one for the uh, power rankings just going on drafts. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much um, it for this video. Uh, 16, any th final thoughts to add? 16 people took us about an hour and 15 minutes. That's not horrible. That's not bad. I think we've done okay there. We did like um, an hour for 12 people last season, so... Yeah, we've cut down nicely. Good yeah. for us. Hopefully, <laughs> awesome. going forward, we'll be able to uh, keep it around an hour-ish, is what we're hoping to do, but yeah, you never know. It depends so. on the weeks, so... Yeah. But yeah, that's that's pretty much going to be it for this one. Uh, so thank you all very much for watching. We do hope you've enjoyed. As we said at the beginning of the video, these are just our opinions. And at this point, they are just based on the draft. So if you agree with us, fantastic, amazing. Let us know in the comment section. If you disagree with us, also fantastic, amazing. Let us know in the comment section. We want to hear your opinions. No Where would you have ranked wrong our they are. <laughs> No matter how wrong they are, no matter how much you might agree with Shardy, um, whatever his opinion Now, hold went. up a second. If know. we got people out there agreeing with Shoddy, we might need to start, like, getting some public executions going on, because something has gone wrong. Well, bear that in mind, gang, um, if you do happen to agree with him. Uh, we, 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 we talk we talk crap on Shoddy a lot, but he loves it, really. Um, That's really, like, isn't that why the TBU exists, is to crap on Shoddy and Frito? Most of the time, yeah, most of the time. But, uh, yes... That is going to say wrap things up from us. We'll be back, hopefully, uh, every week with our power rankings. And keep your eye on the channel for further analytical videos from the rest of the great team over at the Battle Union uh, for their videos. So, yeah, keep your eyes open. Hopefully, as I say, last season, we all encountered some problems uh, with timings and stuff. But hopefully this season, we'll be back to regular scheduling. So, yeah, keep your eyes open. Uh, Chaos, any final thoughts to add before we head off? Yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out the Battle Union channel for the other videos. Like Shroom said, there should be links in the description for people and other things like the competitors and the other analysts. So be sure to check uh -huh. everyone out and uh, leave comments about what you thought. Like Shroom said, he pretty much covered it all. I am eager to read them. Excellent, as am I. So uh, for now, guys, we will see you uh, another time. So our final thank you to you all for watching. And yeah, we will see you uh, in the next video. So uh, take care, TBU fans. Good night. Farewell.